Okay. All right. Okay. Um, where was that? Not just now, yeah? Okay. Since this is our first time meeting, um, we were supposed to meet last month. Unfortunately, we were unable to, to meet up because of PKP and also MCO. All right. So um, is everything clear? Is everything clear? Okay. If it is not, do do let me know, yeah. All right. Because uh, since um, you know, kadang kadang uh, the internet connection can be quite challenging as well. Uh, provide uh, the place that I live in. I I actually live in Meru. The place that I live in is quite challenging when it comes to internet connection as well, yeah. So if let's say it is lagging or buffering or anything, you let me know by the chat so that I I can uh, refresh or we'll see how. Okay, but so far Google Meet is um, Google Meet can actually uh, is capable to 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 uh, to be utilized by uh, average or below than average internet bandwidth. Yeah, so should not be a problem. I think. All right. So since this is our first time meeting, so I think I have explained. Oh, sorry, I have already introduced myself in our ICEPs. Oh, sorry, on iClass. Uh, but then again, let me just officially introduce myself, you know, throughout, so that until later, you know that this is your lecturer teaching you this course, yeah? So my name is Nche Ilyas. However, students address me as Mr. E. So you can also call me Mr. E. How you address me as Mr. E. I'm a lecturer teaching in UITM, Akademi Bajan Bahasa, yeah? My faculty is actually in UITM Shah Alam. However, um, there are also courses, um, sorry, there are also lecturers servicing in other campuses, you know, like in Puncha Alam and so on. But uh, my classes are all in Alam. So does my office. My office is also in Alam, yeah. But uh, because of PKP and uh, you know this MCO, I don't think there is a need for you for us to meet up in person or in in small groups or in larger groups. That the so we'll just you know meet with each other via online like this. And also, if you have questions um, or anything that you want to ask regarding this course, you can just ask in the WhatsApp group. Okay. Uh, um, at the moment, um, our iClass is highly congested. Apparently, a lot of lecturers are using iClass, you know, yesterday and today. And due to high traffic, um, the server is a bit slow or probably will be crashing in a, in, in a while. Yeah. So that is why uh, I don't use iClass. I wanted to update some announcement. I was not able to do so just now because of the uh, traffic. Uh, however, we have been informed, lah, lecturers, all lecturers, we have already informed them uh, to actually use other alternatives like Google Meet, you know, Google Classroom. Uh, iClass is just is meant for asynchronous uh, online teaching. Asynchronous means that, you know, um, if you want to post something, you want to upload materials, boleh lah. Tapi you nak buat online, it's, it's very difficult. They don't have that functions or features. But I guess a lot of lecturers are actually using iDiscuss. So they post something to iDiscuss, they expect students to reply then, then, yeah. So me, on the other hand, I am using this Google Meet, all right? Okay, uh, I wanted to use um, YouTube Live, but then again, you know, there are also a few things that I have to handle, but we'll try. I'll try to see how it goes, you know, because we still have the, like, uh, the rest of the semester. Uh, one thing good about uh, YouTube Live is uh, if you have subscribed to my channel, you'll get the notifications. So, kalau lupa ke apa ke, then you can straight away join the so-called uh, YouTube Live. And also, it will be automatically recorded. So those who missed my class or my lecture, you can refer, you know, to the videos that have uh, that have been recorded, lah. Okay, all right. So I guess uh, that is a little bit about myself. My office is also in Shalam as well, but then again, because of PKP, we're not going, we're not moving around. We're having um, the house is now becoming the office, yeah. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that some of your working people, you are facing the same the same situation as well, yeah. All right. Okay. So I have shared with you um, the lecture notes and also a slide um, explaining about this course. Okay. We'll start with the slide first. Yeah. So I'll share with you the slide. Okay, I hope you are able to see this, yeah? If you are not able to see this, then you do let me know.
Okay. All right. Are you able to see this? I hope you are, yeah? Okay. Okay, so we'll start off with the um, the course uh, description. So basically, this is what the course is all about. Um, I have also highlighted a few phrases or words that I find very um, important to this course here. So we have words like oral presentations, and then uh, this course also involves uh, verbal and non-verbal communication skills, and then it uses visual aids, and also, you know, um, you'll be required to respond to questions and comments orally. So by now, now, what you have in mind, ELC 590, is basically a course about oral presentations. The outcome is for you to be able to speak and to deliver something at the end of the day. Okay, so this is what the course is all about. All right. And then uh, these are the course learning outcomes. I am not going to uh, read for you. I'm pretty sure that all of you, you can read on your own. And these are the things that you will get in return, yeah? Okay, whether or not you are going to get this directly or indirectly, that depends on um, how effective the course is to you, yeah? Okay, so we'll skip this part and we'll just go straight away to the assessments. I guess this is the most interesting part. Uh, every student are actually waiting, uh, they, they are, all all of you are waiting for this yeah all right Okay, so there are two main assessments here. The first one is informative speech, and the second is persuasive speech. Yeah? Informative speech covers only 40%, and your persuasive speech is 60%. So now you know that at the end of ELC 590, you are required to deliver speeches. So the first one is informative speech, and the second one is persuasive speech. So we don't have tests. We don't have quizzes. We don't have final exams. We only have ongoing assessments and assignments, OK? Now, let us move on to informative speech. Now, if you really want to know what informative speech is, later there will be um, a specific lecture video explaining on this, not to worry, yeah? actually on both speeches. But then again, in general, informative speech, the word informative comes from the word information. That is to inform a person about something. Yeah, Persuasive speech, on the other hand, is a speech, your ability to persuade people, to fall into your idea, to fall into your argument, to fall into your persuasion. So there are two, actually, there are many types of, pers uh, of speeches that we have, you know, um, uh, there are many types of speeches that, that that are available. However, the focus of oral presentation for ELC 590 is on these two types of speeches only, all right? Okay, now for your informative speech, um, the speech, actually the assessment is divided into two parts. The first one is your speech, the speech itself, which covers 30% and the portfolio. So any kind of um, oral presentation, there should be a write-up. So your write-up is in a form of a portfolio. And a portfolio is basically, I'm not, uh, later I'll explain, yeah? let, let us move on to the, 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 to the next slide. Yeah? Okay, let us talk about the speech first. So as I mentioned to you just now, it is actually 30%. It is an individual assessment. So I don't want you to have a feeling that this is going to be a pair work or a group work. No, it is an individual assessment. Now, I have been given the understanding that I have about 34 of you in this class. So that means there will be like 34 students present presenting informative speech. So everyone will be presenting uh, a speech, an informative speech. So there will be 34 speeches, okay, for informative speech and respectively for persuasive speech. So how long is your speech delivery? Five minutes, not more than that. 
Uh, I, five minutes is not the minimum; it's the maximum requirement. Why? Because you know some classes, like the, uh, in the case of yours, I have about thirty-four of you in the class. So you can imagine that thirty-four times five. That means you know I'll be needing perhaps more than two hours, and we are talking just about the first page. And later, when we look at the second page, you realize that time is basically our obstacle here, you know, uh, our predicament. But later on, you know, I'll explain on how to go about it. Don't worry. All right. And how are you going to present? You'll be using Google Meet. Okay. Normally, on normal circumstance, uh, we'll be having audience. That is your friends. So your friends will be the audience listening to your speech. But because of this PKP, I don't want later on, you know, there'll be like problems in between when you are presenting this and that. So your presentation will be done individually. However, it will be done using Google Meet uh, platform. Yeah. So I will share you the link and then we will assign who presents when and what time and whatnot. Because this is going to be five minutes. Let's say once I'm done and then you have left the speech, uh, sorry, you have left the so-called Google Meet, then perhaps in the WhatsApp group, I'll call the next person to join in. So it will be done as such. Yeah, not to worry. And then, uh, and also I need to record your presentation as well as a proof that you have done this speech, you know. So there will be, uh, okay, you need to refer to the seminar schedule. I, I have the seminar schedule with me, but later I will share with you. And that seminar, I don't think I have shared it, yeah? Uh, let me just share with you first so that you can refer to, oh, okay, tak apa. Later I'll share with you in our WhatsApp group, okay? Okay, so I'll come back to this part. Okay. So you can also refer to the seminar schedule. Seminar schedule is basically um, the timetable for our seminars based on the recent uh, dates uh, of seminars and also what I plan to do uh, during that so-called online seminars. Yeah? So I have written everything. So it will be carried out during our seminars three and four. So if I have 34 of you, half of you will be doing in uh, seminar three and the other half will be doing in seminar four. So what happens if let's say you are not selected uh, uh, in the batch uh, to do your speech in week, uh, sorry, in seminar three. So that means you won't be joining us. You just need to concentrate on your speech presentation in seminar number four. And likewise, those who are presenting in seminar number four, uh, seminar number three, later during seminar number four, you do not need to join us. You just need to focus on, you know, completing your uh, second speech. All right. So it will be carried out during seminar three and four, yeah? Okay, um, the portfolio, on the other hand, is basically a compilation of materials lah, used to prepare for the speech is 10%. And since uh, we are doing everything online, uh, previously, the portfolio should be in a form of a hard copy. But because we are doing everything online and it will be troublesome for you to send the hard copy, so everything will be kept uh, using soft copy, all right? Uh, so there should be front cover, I think, by now, you should know what a front cover is. Uh, content, uh, there should be an outline of your speech. So the template of your outline will be given to you. Uh, there should also be a draft of your speech. Uh, so draft is basically like um, an essay of your speech. But then again, it's a draft. So basic, when, when, you, when you present your speech, perhaps the content may be different because you may have made some changes, you know, uh, changes in your draft or in your speech. So that draft is just to, to tell me that you are doing this uh, progressively. That means uh, that's a progress. That's a proof of progress. Okay. Uh, also, you must include a graph uh, or a chart or a table, at least one. And it has to be relevant to the speech topic. So if you're using, if you're presenting, uh, if let's say you have one topic and this is your topic, um, you must also include a graph or a chart or a table to support your speech, okay? So this one is compulsory for informative speech. But not only to include, nanti later when I come up with that lecture video explaining about this informative speech, I will detail out on this part, yeah? I do not want to lecture a lot on this because uh, at this moment, I just want you to understand on how we go about the assessment sahaja, okay? And also, you must include one article only. And that article is to support your speech. 
um, that article can come from various sources. Can it can come from books or educational magazines, newspapers, websites, research journals, just anything that is educational in nature. Yeah, and all. Again, there will be a short video lecture uh, on what and how an article is considered to be good. Yeah, and you'll be submitting your uh, so-called portfolio, the soft copy via Google Drive. So the link for the Google Drive will be shared to all of you, and the link will be made available for public so that you do not need to get my permission in order for you to upload your uh, your soft copy. All right. Okay, next is um, persuasive speech. Now, for your persuasive speech, um, again, it is divided into two parts, very much similar to your informative speech. 40% uh, for the speech and 20% for the portfolio. But what is not similar is the weightage. Okay, for persuasive speech, it's, uh, uh, it's more than informative speech by 20%. Yeah? And why? Persuasive speech is more than uh, your informative speech. Uh, there's a reason to it. Number one, because the length of your presentation is seven minutes. Okay. Uh, and number two, the requirement for your portfolio. Later, when we go to the portfolio part, then you will start to understand why. Yeah. So again, um, forty percent individual assessment. I have mentioned about this. Seven minutes. Seven minutes is maximum. Yeah, presentation via Google Meet, and it will be carried out on seminar number five. Now, this is the part that I really need to explain to all of you so that you understand better. Now, if you notice, we only have seminar five. Okay, so seminar one, like today, uh, my plan is to explain to you about this course and also to uh, to cover a few lectures, you know, not all, because uh, if all, then perhaps we don't have more than, uh, sorry, we need to have more than two hours. Just the important part, the rest, nanti when I upload the lecture videos, you can listen and watch the lecture videos in order for you to understand each and every single topics and subtopics. So not to worry on that. It's just that I am not able to do it today to upload on my YouTube. Some I have already upload, uploaded on YouTube. So I cannot upload on YouTube because of the internet um, congestion. Yeah. So sometimes I do it late at night, you know, or early in the morning where the traffic is very mild or uh, lower than that. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, when we carry out, so that is the for first seminar. Second seminar, pula, I plan to cover a few other things as well, a few other topics, and plus we'll be doing some online consultation. So as you are preparing your first speech and your second speech, you may have questions and you may want to ask me. So when you ask in our so-called uh, 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 meeting, so, um, you know, if let's say anyone else may have the same questions or the same concerns, then later when I explain on that, then everyone can get, you know, um, how on how to go or on how to solve that issue. Okay. Uh, fourth, uh, sorry, third and fourth seminar, you'll be doing your first assessment. So fifth seminar is where you're going to do your second assessment, which is your speech. But then again, you know, everyone is presenting seven minutes now. And if I have 30, 34 of you, I need at least three hours. But we are meeting only for two hours. So how are we going to resolve that? So this is how it's going to be. Some of you, you will be assigned to present during the seminar. Some will be assigned to uh, sorry, you will be assigned to um, time after the seminar. Now, since our class is from 2 to 4, and some of you have class at 4.15 to 6.15, so when will it be? Maybe at night, you know, or the days after. Maybe because our class is on Monday, sorry, Sunday, so perhaps on Monday or Tuesday. And normally, I will be carried out at night. Because some of you are still working and we can never know, you know, during our seven, sorry, our fifth seminar, whether PKP has ended or not. If it has ended and everyone is required to go back to work, so most of you will be working during the day. So the only time that everyone is available and should be available is at night. So that is how I will be carrying out. But then again, you know, some people may have um, few, um, you know, predicaments or some situations you know you cannot join uh, on on sunday you have to join so how am i going to resolve this 
So because I don't know you and I do not know your situation, so I will just assign you randomly. Okay, so I'll pick names. Normally, I don't pick names. I have the list, so I'll just divide the list into two, and then you know I just put you into groups, and I'll just I'll let you know by WhatsApp group. Now, once you have been assigned to the time, if let's say, and I'm I'm saying this not only for persuasive speech, it is also applicable for your informative speech as well, because as you realize, we have two seminars where you'll be presenting. So I don't know on which Sunday that you are available. So I'll just assign you at random. So if let's say you are given with the days or the date or the time that you are not available due to some constraints, it can be you know um, a personal constraint, it can be work constraint, anything. The first thing that you need to do, don't come to me first or don't come to me yet. We have the WhatsApp group. Please, you know, announce in the WhatsApp group. Uh, tell your friends or ask your friends. Hi, friends. Uh, if you are too scared or because I'll be giving you the list. So if you don't want to, not too scared. Maybe you're too shy to talk about this. So once you, once you, 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 you get the list, you can see the names who are presenting on certain dates and days and and times. So what you can do, you can just refer to that person or whoever the people who are presenting that you feel that perhaps they can help you out what you can do is you swap now you cannot just come straight away to me and say that mr e i cannot join uh, uh this sunday i can join the, the the other sunday can i just straight away join you see the reason why i divide you equally is that so that we have enough time for everyone to present now if we have extremes on certain days we'll go back to the same situation whereby we'll be needing more than two hours. So this is the situation I'm trying to avoid. And I am actually hoping that you can give to, that you can give to me your fullest cooperation. Because, uh, you know, you should understand that we are carrying out this class online, so there will be a lot of things going on. Okay? So if possible I want you to, re to solve this, whatever uh, the problem that, that, that uh, there is with your friends first okay try to swap with your friends because i'll assign you at random so i don't really know you if you're given on the days that you cannot uh do your because this is your assessment the moment you miss if let's say for example you are presenting tonight but then again i wait and wait and wait and you uh you don't uh, show up or you don't turn up so i'll just assume that you are not interested okay and like after one or two weeks later, then you come back to me and you say, Mr. E, I have not done my speech. Is it possible for me? Yes, I can still allow you to do it. But then again, the marks will not be the same. There will be some sort of penalization because you did not adhere to the first, uh, to the given time and date and, 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 and days. Yeah? So I hope that you can give your fullest cooperation. We'll try to make this journey as smooth as possible. And in order for us to make this journey as smooth as possible, um, there is a need for you to give your fullest cooperation. I'm trying my very best to give my fullest cooperation as well. Yeah? So I hope you understand on that part. So coming back to this seminar, once you have been assigned, let's say some of you will be presenting from 2 to 5, eh, sorry, 2 to 4, and then some may be on the same day but later at night. And then if let's say we still have more few people to go, then those people will be presenting on Monday night or on Tuesday night, depending, you know, how many students that we have currently. And at this moment, I cannot access the recent class list or name list, you know, because I still need to use UITM intranet. So until I can go back to my office, as of now, I just have 34 of you in my list, okay? So if let's say 34 is the number of our, uh, of the students, then I think um, we can just finish everything on Sunday, but not within that two hours. So some of you will be presenting on Sunday later that night. So if let's say the class ends at 6.15, so after maybe Maghrib, we'll start at around 8 o'clock, okay? So because roughly I just need another one hour. If we go accordingly, yeah? Because given the number 34, I think seven minutes, we just need about three hours or slightly more than three hours, okay? So I hope you understand this part. And the same thing is applicable for assessment one. 
seminar number three and seminar number four. If you are assigned on any seminar and you are not able to, and hopefully this is in advance, you know, that means you can foresee that you won't be able to, to do your speech, uh, you know, then you please res uh, resolve that issue or resolve that problem by swapping with your friends. When you swap, the status quo remains. That means number of students for each week remains. So it should not be a problem to me. And you do not need to even inform me. Okay. But some students will take the, you know, uh, will, will, will inform me in advance. But I'm okay if you want to inform me. But if you don't want to inform me, pun tak apa. But make sure that you have swap. And both parties or both students agree upon, yeah? Kalau tak nak, you seorang je assume that person agrees. And then lepas tu, it becomes problems. And if let's say you, you dah buat apa semua, but no one is trying to help you out and whatnot, then you can come back to me. But when you come back to me, I hope that when I ask you, have you done swapping? Have you asked your friends around? And then you said, dah. And then I ask your friends. Your friends kata, tak ada pun, tak pernah tanya pun. So that is lebih kurang macam orang malas lah. Eh? You don't want to straight away resolve your problem. You are hoping me to resolve it on your part. So I hope I won't be seeing this lah. You know, this is my 11th year of teaching. Tahun ke-11 saya mengajar. Dah lama dah sebenarnya, ya. Yeah? So I can already foresee what are the things, you know, whatever that you plan to do will be in my pocket. But then again, you are all adult learners. So I hope that I won't be treating you like how I treat my full-time students, you know. Uh, even my full-time students, po, I treat them like adults juga. So it's more like, you know, just if you're doing it right and you follow my instruction, insyaAllah, saya akan permudahkan, Allah akan permudahkan your journey, yeah? not to worry. All right. So I hope I can get your fullest cooperation on that. Is it possible, everyone? Boleh ke? All right. Okay. So if you have things to, to ask or anything, just let me know. All right. If you have questions, stop me. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. Ramai tulis. Yes, sir. Cancer. All right. Bagus. Sambil-sambil saya terang, sambil-sambil tu, I drink my coffee, yeah? All right. I hope it is okay with everyone. Although this is online learning, but uh, this is more like an online learning tapi lead back kind of online learning, you know. Uh, so not necessarily that you have to wear your full attire ke apa ke, not to worry, yeah. I'm not sure about others. A lot of you have uh, dah, dah tak functionkan you punya video and whatnot. Okay. Noted. All right. Have your drink. Okay, thank you. You can also have your drinks, but I cannot share my drinks with you, yeah. Uh, if um, Perhaps not now, tapi later lah, eh. Bila dia dah develop, you know, some sort of like a um, how I don't know to share things online. Okay. All right. So uh, coming back to this one, I uh, since everyone faham, so let us move on, yeah, about the portfolio. Okay. So the portfolio uh, basically is the same like your portfolio for your informative speech. But this time around, it's 20%. Why? Because instead of having only one article, now you're required to add, to have at least five articles. But the articles can come from various sources. But here's a tip that I can share with you. Actually, it's the tip that I'll be, you know, mentioning in the le lecture video or lecture tutorial lah. Don't worry. The tip is, since we're doing everything online, my advice is to find something that is available online. When we talk about books, go and find online books lah. When we talk about educational magazines, go and find something that is online. Newspaper pun online. Website is, of course, online lah. Research journals pun cari yang online. Now, why? Because when you want to compile, let's say you're using Microsoft Word, and I always advise my students to use Microsoft Word. Easy. Because you can have the front cover, you can organize everything from one page to another. So when you have your sources or your articles online, you just need to copy and paste. Because that will be in your appendices, betul tak? I don't want later nanti you kata, Sir, I have the articles, tapi, uh, you know, it's in a form of a hard copy. I don't know how to transfer to soft copy since you want us to submit soft copy. So my advice is, when you want to find those articles, make sure that they come from online sources. But it has to be credible online sources. 
And what macam mana you nak talk credible tak credible later when I come up with that lecture video, you can watch and you uh, hopefully you can understand on how to go about it. Yeah. And once you have compiled everything, you will be submitting your portfolio on Google Drive. Now, the submission of your portfolio has to be done before your speech. So let's just say that your first speech will be done in uh, during seminar number three and four. So slightly before Sunday seminar three, you should have already submitted your portfolio because I need to assess your portfolio. I need to have, um, you know, um, a good understanding on what your speech is all about. But of course, throughout, um, you know, throughout this this uh, uh, this uh, semester, kita akan ada online uh, consultation or personal consultation, verbal consultation via WhatsApp group, via iDiscuss on iClass, you know, we'll be having that. So some of you are quite active. So you have questions, can you have idea, can you will just ask me and then, you know, uh, I, I, normally I will be seeing the same person, okay, from one section to another. We'll start with the introduction, the body content, the conclusion is always the same person because perhaps if this person has sheer interest in, you know, or uh, really committed to, 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 to this cause. Some, you know, you, you may decide not to join or not to participate in that so-called so consultation. So I, that is why some, uh, that's why I make it compulsory for you to submit before your speech so that I can read each and everyone's uh, speech outline or speech uh, draft so that I can get, you know, uh, the picture of your speech. So I know what you're doing. Now, Later, when we talk about topics, there are also a few uh, requirements as well, yeah? All right. Uh, we'll come back to that part until later when you go to the lecture part, okay? All right. So, lecture materials, again, will be avail uh, it's already available on iClass, but then again, just now I shared with you in our WhatsApp group because I know iClass is not, uh, is highly congested at the moment, yeah? So, maybe some of you may have troubles in accessing the uh, DLMS, yeah? Okay, with regard to COVID-19, not COVID, yeah, I'm so sorry, typo there. Eh? COVID-19 pandemic, our seminar will be carried out online. So online lah, from seminar one until seminar five, unless we are informed the otherwise. Okay, because as you can see that, you know, even our academic calendar pun keep, keeps on changing, yeah? All right. So done with this, any questions so far? Okay, do you have any question? No, eh? Okay. All right, I have a question from uh, Fazlin. Is there any certain topic for the speech? Okay. Uh, I'll uh, respond to Fazlin first. Yeah? There's also another question from Mastura. So Fazlin, uh, topic you choose. Later, when I explain on how to go about your informative speech, we'll be covering on how to choose topics. So you are going to choose your topic. But of course, your topic, if it is informative, it has to be an informative topic. All right. Um, what are informative topic? You need to refer to my lecture notes, you know, uh, nanti later we'll discuss on that lah, okay? But here here are some of the things that I can share with all of you when it comes to topic. Now, let's just say I have 34 of you. So, 34 of you will be using or give you uh, will be coming up with 34 different topics. Cannot be the same. And what do I mean by not, by not having the same topic? If let's say one is talking about, um, you know, um, uh, cancer, for example, I don't want there will be few other students talking about cancer. Tanala, everyone is talking about cancer. Can you know talking about disease now? Given the circumstance of this COVID nineteen, is very depressing. You know, and imagine that if I have thirty four of you talking about cancer la, all kind of diseases la. So we try not to go to the same theme or the same group of topics. So if let's say someone has covered cancer, you may want to cover something else. We can still talk about disease, you know. So maybe one covers about cancer, the other one talks about heart disease, 
topic can just be anything. There will be no specific theme ke tak ada. Not to worry about that. Because this is the part that you want to explore. Sometimes you just want to find topics that you are good at or maybe you want to find topics like um, that is uh, available online sebab nanti later you nak cari juga you punya materials. You you simply go and find topic yang tak, tak yang yang susah ke and then when you want to find it online, tak jumpa. Yang ada semua offline. You have to go to the library. If let's say PKP is extended, how are you going to go to the library? Uh, so these are few considerations that you may want to to think or to consider, yeah. So I hope this um, answers your question, Fazlin. Next is Mastura. Mastura asks the portfolio should be sent in PDF or words format. Okay, this is a very good question. Okay, first you compile everything using Word dulu, so but it will be easier for you to organize, for you to have. Uh, to put pages, you know, to put front page lah, apa lah, header, footer, up to you. But later, once everything is saved, you save dulu dalam Word, then again, you save dalam bentuk PDF. The one that you send to me, PDF. Why? Because when I receive your PDF, everything will be structured. It won't be moved. Takut nanti when the, your Microsoft Word setting is different, when you submit to me or you upload on Google Drive, I download and I think oh, inorganized pula. Terlari sana sini margin semua lari. And then to my understanding, you did not organize your portfolio. Organization of a portfolio is part of the marks. Uh, okay? All right. So you'll be sending to me my in PDF form. All right. Any 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 other question? No question so far? Date of submission. Date of submission of what, Ya Nur Huda? Uh, the portfolio, eh? I hope you are talking about the portfolio. So, date of submission is again, as I mentioned to you, it is before your presentation. Okay, there will be no specific date of submission because once I have created the folder on Google Drive and once I have made that folder available for public, that means everyone can just access without even having me to give you the permission. If you think that you are done with your portfolio, you have completed your portfolio, you want to submit, you can just submit anytime. Tapi the last date or the last day too before your presentation speech. So if let's say you are presenting in week, uh, sorry, during seminar number three. So seminar number three uh, is, let me just check, yeah, weekly schedule. So seminar, oh no, not this one. Okay, seminar number three is on the 31st of May, correct? So, since if let's say you are presenting on 31st of May, then make sure that you submit before 31st of May lah. Uh, okay, not on 31st of May. 31st of May is the day that you are presenting. So, pagi tu, I also have classes. So, I don't want lah nanti later on in between, baru lah I, I, I can read your portfolio. So what happens if let's say you submit late juga? Ada, of course, you know, this is, again, as I told you, this is not my first time teaching. Untuk for EPJJ itself, I've been teaching for more than seven years, okay? So surely there'll be late submission lah. So what happens to these people? Now, again, whatever, I, I just, first, I just want to quote what Einstein says lah. For every action, there'll be reactions. In a way of saying this, for every action, there will be consequences. So if, let's say, um, you have assigned your portfolio, sorry, you have submitted your portfolio late, there will be penalization of marks. Okay, on how much, how many, well, that depends on my discretion. Because I cannot be, I cannot be too uh, rigid. Whoever submits after 35, uh, sorry, 31st of May, then I'll deduct 5%. No, it will be based on per person basis. That means it depends on the situation that you are going through. Because I should understand, you know, sometimes some people, you have your own situations, you have your own predicament. So 
unless there's nothing from you and memang, memang you simply submit late then I'll deduct marks lah tapi not really that much but that penalization is a form of punishment so that you understand you cannot submit any later than the given time or the given date okay but there will be no specific date because let's say those who are presenting in week uh, in during seminar number four, but before seminar number three, did a siap portfolio dia and then he said or she said that I want to submit uh, now then you can submit lah Uh, so, kalau saya cakap nanti, oh no, no, so whoever is presenting seminar number four, yours is before seminar number four, but it has to be after seminar number four, tak boleh. I don't want too many rules, otherwise it, will be, uh, otherwise it will be too complicated for you and for me as well, yeah? Okay, anything else? Yang lain semua okay ke? Okay, noted. Sofia said noted. All right. All right, thank you so much. Okay, I guess once you have understood on how we are going to do the assessment, so basically you are there, in your mind, this is what you are going to do, yeah? Just to recap so that you understand this. You are going to present two types of speeches, simple as that. So you have informative speech and persuasive speech. And this will be done individually. That means everyone will be presenting, yeah? Okay, and then how are you going to present? You're going to present via Google Meet. How are you going to submit your portfolio via Google Drive. Simple je. But the notes nanti, lecture notes nanti, since you may you may have this um, questions or maybe these are the things that is actually pondering in your mind, yeah? Uh, what's the point of reading if let's say our, you know, because there's no quiz, there's no test, no final exams. Okay, why you need to read? Because every aspect that will be assessed in your speech is actually in the lecture notes or lecture videos. So that's why you need to read and that's why you need to view and you need to watch my lecture videos. My lecture videos, there will be just my voice je lah, explaining about it. Okay, I don't put my face phone. Uh, so there will be my voice sahaja explain about the the topics. So that's why you need to read and that's why you need to understand because you need to include all those aspects, yeah? Okay? All right. So now I'm going to talk about the... Uh, some of the slides that I've shared with you, but I'm not going to go through all, yeah? Because otherwise, Nanti, as I mentioned to you, we may need more than two hours. And as you can see that the slides are quite few. So, uh, but then again, if you let's say, Alamak, kalau Mr. E tak cover semua, how am I going to understand this? Don't worry, every single slide, there will be lecture videos, okay? It's just that some of them I already uploaded. But Nanti later, I will just arrange them on our um i dis on i discuss and also in our whatsapp group not to worry okay i'll skip lecture one i want to talk about um theoretical aspects that the topic of your speech okay this one yeah so let me share this so i am actually if you are if you if you want to know I am actually looking at slide 2B at the moment. Okay, before before that, let me just share with you the weekly schedule. Eh? So, tapi takut ada yang macam terpinga-pinga. What is basically a weekly schedule? Let me just share with you. Yours is 9A. Yeah? Okay. Um, go back to this one. Sorry, not weekly schedule, seminar schedule. I, we can, I hope you can see this, yeah? Okay, so this is basically your seminar schedule for your class. What I have planned, I have not shared this. Tadi lupa. Nanti I'll, I'll share this in, in, in our WhatsApp group, yeah? So this is basically what I have planned for our seminars, okay, until the end of the semester. So we have seminar one until seminar number five. And as you can see, seminar number one, I should be introducing the course explaining about the assessment, so one and two done. 
discussion on weeks one to four lectures. So by, sepatutnya by now, you should have already read all the lectures lah for, from week one to week four. I think I have uploaded the materials, uh, but it's the same, the same lecture notes. But then again, if you have missed that part, it's okay. And also, I promise you with the lecture videos. So once I have uploaded the lecture videos on YouTube, you can get the notification if you have already followed my uh, YouTube channel. And also, um, I will share or embed the YouTube link on iDiscuss. So if you miss the one, that's about YouTube saya tu penuh dengan a lot of lecture videos, yeah? Not only for this course, other courses as well. So some students might get that confused. So you can actually refer to uh, iDiscuss. But then again, I do not know how, um, I mean, how, uh, whether the congestion of iClass ni will prolong ke tidak. I, also, I have another option. Another option is to use a Telegram bot. Telegram bot, that means you have to download Telegram lah. But it's, it's a Telegram bot, uh, tak dapa. It's like uh, I give you the link, you subscribe, not subscribe lah. You have to add or subscribe, I think, or follow ke Telegram bot, I cannot remember. But everything will just be there. Okay, so you boleh buka kat situ, ada chapter 1, chapter 2, week 1, week 2, semua, everything is there. The videos, the lecture notes and everything. So, that one will be much easier. But then again, I need to reorganize balik my Telegram bot too. Few things I have to keluarkan and few things I have to add in. So, that also will uh, require time. But I I actually prefer to use iClass, you know, uh, or I discuss. Tapi, we'll see how it goes, yeah? Okay, I I think most likely the and the the uh, the LMS will be okay after today six fifteen lah code because there'll be no classes can, all right. Okay, so basically this is the uh, this is seminar number one. Seminar number two, okay. Uh, this is the part yang saya cakap nanti quick explanation or recap on assessment. So there will be like a specific lecture videos explaining on informative speech and also persuasive speech. What are the do's and the don'ts and so on. And kita ada like a very brief discussion on week five and nine punya lectures. And then also online consultation. Uh, this is seminar number three and number four where I plan to carry out our first assessment. And seminar number five where I plan to do your second assessment. Yeah. Okay. I think I have explained everything. So, but then this is just for you to, for your perusal. Okay. For your reference. Okay. So. All right, so now let us move on to the to this part. Okay, your uh, the lecture two B, uh, developing developing the topic of your speech. So just now someone asked me about the topic, and okay, I think I have mentioned briefly about the topic. Now, whenever I talk about the topic or whatever aspects in a speech, those aspects are covered in both speeches. That is in your informative speech and your persuasive speech yeah because there are few aspects that are very similar requirement is sama sahaja so for example like this this topic the topic of your speech so when i explain um the requirement for your speech is actually uh, untuk informative dan juga persuasive they are the same all right so jangan fikirkan ni untuk informative saja nanti later you tanya what about uh, persuasive no they are actually the same the same the requirement that means macam mana how to think about the topic uh, so it's the same all right so these are the contents okay now number one when you want to deliver a speech first thing is for you to consider your audience you know so you need to to analyze. Tapi in our case, audience pun siapa is going to be just me lah. So, but then again, why you need to analyze? Because sometimes, some students, they may forget this part, you know. Um, uh, let's say your topic can be quite sexist. Sexist means what? Maybe too extreme on one gender. Okay, why men are better than women, for example. Or likewise, why women are better than men. You know, or maybe they are too racist, okay? Or it has some racial sentiment in it. Maybe they are not racist, but other racial sentiment, okay? Or maybe there's a prejudice towards certain religion. So these are the things that you need to consider. I'm not saying that you know it can be any. I'm I'm not trying to limit 
your ability to come up with the topics. But then again, you need to consider a few other things, you know. Uh, what are the taboo topics? Uh, janganlah pilih topics yang people don't don't usually discuss in public, you know. Okay. Macam I think 10 years ago, people don't even want to choose sex education. Yeah, this is just an example, yeah, as a topic. But now I can see that some people are very open and it's acceptable. In fact, at the ministry level, everyone is actually discussing about the, you know, um, having sex education in, in, in our so-called curriculum in, in Malaysia. But then again, you know, um, that, but there are a few other topics that are quite taboo that people don't actually discuss. And since you're going to do this online and it will be recorded, I don't want people to have a, um, a different interpretation on how you present your topic. The best thing is to come up with a quite, a, 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 I'm not saying safer topic, but less controversial, less controversial topic, you know. Uh, that that is acceptable by public or everyone. Okay, consider also the cultural diverse backgrounds of your audience. You know. Now, who is your sorry? Who is the audience? What are my interests, talents, and experiences? What is the occasion? These are the few things or few questions that you can ask yourself. Another tips that I can share with you: Some people they are good at one thing. For example, yeah, I can just be a lecturer. But it seems that I like yoga. This is just an example. Not necessarily that I like yoga, but this is just an example. Now, let's just say I like yoga. I'm good at doing yoga. I've been doing yoga for quite some times, you know. So, might as well I just talk about yoga. Yes, because that is your strength, your 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 kekuatan, you know. You know how to, how to uh, talk about yoga. So imagine that if you are you have that strength of talking about certain topics that can be good for you can be on kata ex, an advantage for you yeah can also be something that maybe you are a big fan of you know you like to watch star wars for example so you want to talk about star wars movies or the star wars franchise yes why not okay so that depends on you and i do not limit yourself uh, for example, okay, for this semester, I want everyone to just talk about health sahaja. No, not necessarily. It can be health, entertainment. But at the end of the day, the topic has to be, number one, it has to be specific, cannot be general. For example, I'm going to talk or I'm going to deliver a speech about cancer. Cancer is a very broad topic. You have to narrow it down until you take it to process here. You have to narrow it down so that you know how to come up with a, just a specific topic and you just focus on that. After all, you only have five minutes. What can you five hours? So you cannot be explaining on everything, right? Okay. And then what else? Okay, uh, uh, this is the general purpose. Okay. Now, in your topic, number one, you must have general purpose. General purpose is to inform, to persuade, or to entertain. But in this case, we only have two general purposes for two speeches. The first speech is to inform. The second speech is to persuade. So to inform what? To inform my audience, for example. yeah, You want to inform your audience about what? So next is for you to have a specific purpose. So a concise statement indicating what you want your listeners to be able to do or to remember or to feel when you finish your speech. So... An example that I've given here, at the end of my speech, the audience will be able to identify three elements in the wheat belly diet. So there's this one type of belly diet, which is wheat belly diet. There are three main elements in the wheat belly diet, and you want your audience to know that three elements so that they can also, you know, uh, they can also uh, start doing wheat belly diet, for example. So this can be a topic of your of your persuasive speech. Will it? Uh, okay. All right. Central idea is actually one sentence that summarizes the speech content. So the wheat belly diet is based on reducing the amount of processed foods that you eat, avoiding all processed flour, and increasing the amount of exercise you get. So these are the three elements or main elements in wheat belly diet. Okay, so your job is, uh, sorry, for central idea, you need to have these three. And it has to be written in one sentence. So let me just repeat to you. For your speech, you need to have general purpose, specific purpose, 
and central idea. So that when I look at these three, now I know you are only focusing on wheat belly diet. And wheat belly diet, there are a lot of things you can talk about. The advantages, disadvantages, what is good, what is bad, and this and that. But then again, you're just focusing on these three main elements in wheat belly diet. Because, you know, talking about advantages and disadvantages can just, you know, maybe can be, you, that is, will be on a different point of view. But you realize that by just talking about only these three main elements, you can persuade your audience to choose or to use wheat belly diet in order for them to begin their dieting uh, routine, for example. Okay. So you are just focusing on this three. And there's also a reason why it is three. Because we are just focusing, uh, sorry, we are going to develop three body contents. So writing or coming up with your speech is basically like writing your essay. You have your introduction, three body contents, and your conclusion. So basically, these three, three contents, uh, sorry, three elements are basically for the three contents. Maybe with belly diet has more than three elements, but you're focusing only on these three main elements. Okay, the rest maybe not, they're not the main focus lah, but they are part of the elements. All right. So I hope by now you dah faham sikit how and how to go about your topic. Yeah. Any questions so far? Uh, hi, sir. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so for the topic kan, uh, if that uh, for the informative dengan uh, persuasive tu, can we uh, do the same topic but the different thing? It's kind no, of cannot. similar. Oh, so it should be totally to totally uh, different topic lah for this. Topic. Yes. Yes. Like, because some what topic... What I mean is like informative, like uh, general, to general um, for the information. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I do understand what you're trying to ask. But basically, it's like this. Why I do I I want I don't want you to use the same topic for your informative because okay number one you must understand there are topics that can appear informative and also persuasive other topics they will be informative then they will be persuasive so a lot of students they feel that it might as well just choose this topic you know so that we do we can actually use the same content the same no it cannot be done that way because it will be like menipu lah betul tak. So, once you have chosen one topic for your informative speech, then for your persuasive speech, it has to be another different topic. Because we need to train you on how to do small-scale research. Uh, that is why you need to understand that part. Okay, number two pula, maybe some of you have, are having the same thought as well, yeah? What if, let's say, I choose my topic for informative. I choose A for my informative speech and B for my persuasive. Can my friend pula on the other way around, they choose my, my informative speech to be her persuasive speech and choose my persuasive speech to be her informative speech. Maksudnya macam tukar silang lah macam tu. Pun tak boleh. The rule is very simple. If I have 34 of you in my class, there will be 34 different informative topics. Plus, 34 different persuasive topics. Keseluruhan, 68 different topics. Uh, faham eh? Uh, it has to be done that way. And also, uh, as I mentioned to you, this is not my first time teaching juga lah. There will be some students who will be, you know, tengok uh, pensyarah pergi, uh, eh sorry, pensyarah lah, pergi jumpa senior. You know, um, Mr. E, uh, Mr. E mungkin tak tahulah. Tapi, you know, akal dia panjang, you go and see your senior. Hey, you have done ALC 590 before, can? Can I borrow your uh, portfolio? Tak? I just want to have a look sahaja on how to do portfolio. Padahal Mr. E dah kasih dah sample portfolio, template. Dia sahaja cakap dengan kawan dia lah, senior dia. So, once you get the portfolio, you pun copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Semua lah. Hoping that maybe I've not taught the class before. Okay. If that happens, and if let's say you're not caught red-handed, that means God is still giving you a second chance. Uh, I'm saying that, yeah? But if you're caught red-handed, automatically you will be awarded with an F. That means you fail. Why? Plagiarism, kita tak tolerate. We do not condone plagiarism act. So as far as possible, try to come up with your own speech. 
those materials are just to help you out. I don't want until later ada juga. But maybe some students are just asking, Sir, I have this very interesting topic that I found online. Okay, to plagiarism. Topic tak? Kalau topic is not plagiarism. But if let's say you found a topic together with a sample speech, and then with that sample speech, you just make some changes here and there, and then you claim that that speech is yours, and then you submit to me. Also, if let's say I check, tiba-tiba tergerak lah nak check. Normally, you know, we lecturers, we are given with that intuition, you know, we can feel. So, kita pun check. Check, tengok, Allahu Akbar. The similarities is more than 80%. We consider that as plagiarism. Uh, so, be extra careful when it comes to doing your speech, yeah? So, coming back to the topic, I hope I answered the question just now, whoever asked, yeah? Because uh, tak, tak, tak perasan siapa tadi yang tanya. So, I hope that answers your question. Anything else that you need to ask about the topic? So, faham, eh, topic tu? So, if I have 34 of you, there'll be 68 different topics, yeah? Does presentation require PowerPoint? Ah, nanti when we go, we come to the uh, visual aid, nanti you will know. Okay? Kalau tak ada, I just need to move on. Takut nanti tak sempat pula. Okay? Boleh, eh? Alright. Okay? Let me just move on. Uh, so, we are done with this. Uh, sorry, not this one. Okay, um, get the gathering materials. Maybe boleh masuk sedikit lah a bit of this, yeah? English for, uh, sorry, uh, how to gather materials. Tadi dah, dah cerita sikit but I'll just use, I'll just explain uh, briefly lah, eh? Okay, so, um, how to do library research. Uh, you can, basically, you, you need to go to the library. But now, I think our library is also available online. So, you can just go to our library website to find information. But if you ask me, the only, I've been doing research myself a lot. And the only thing that I use is Google search. Okay, dekat Google too. Google is the best uh, database web search. So, I just use Google, all right? And another thing is, for your speech, don't be too ambitious. I think a lot, uh, some of your last master, they even use research paper. Tapi dia tak faham research tu pasal apa. But just to to impress me or to give me a good impression. Oh, I've used uh, research paper as my materials. Find a material that you, when you read, you understand. And it is relevant because the moment I start to read and I see that it's not relevant to your topic or to your speech, it will not be considered as material. So imagine tadi saya kata satu kan, articles. Uh, also about that articles pun ada, maybe you have questions in your mind lah. Uh, Mr. E, you said one, is that minimum ke maximum requirement? That is the minimum requirement. The same thing happens for your persuasive speech, yeah? Five articles to minimum. If let's say ada students yang ada 10 articles, so the more articles you have, the better because that that shows or that tells me that you had done or carried out a research an in-depth research also the articles have to be relevant uh, bukan kita tengok pada volume je we don't look at the quantity only and we are looking at the quality quality as in whether or not the articles that you have found relevant to the topic or to the content of your speech uh, also will be uh, it will be done that way. Eh? I mean, it will be assessed that way. So, uh, not necessarily you are the 20 articles and you want, to, you want to impress me with that 20 articles, but at the end of the day, you know, out of that 20, only 5 saja relevant. 15, not relevant at all. You simply put sahaja. Uh, so, we'll, I'll check one by one. Yeah. So, this is Google. Uh, saya cakap tadi, Google. Okay, evaluating internet documents. All right, authorship, sponsorship, recency. Uh, nanti, later nanti there will be video explaining about this, purpose. Okay, ini kalau nak buat interview but we don't have time. As I mentioned to you just now, not that we don't have time. Sometimes, you know, this, uh, my job is just to explain what are the possibilities, what are the areas, what are the um, common approach that you can actually employ. But at the end of the day, not only you need to study hard, you also need to study smart. That means, Instead of impressing me and it gives you more work, why not you try to come up with something that is very smart? That means, uh, for example, you, you feel like, oh, uh, nanti dah tak ada PKP, I want to go to uh, National Library. Okay, uh, what for? Jauh sangat. And also, no point, no extra marks pun kalau if you go to the National Library. 
when you can actually find the information just dekat Google search sahaja. Uh, so this by just finding the same the same or similar information on Google search that differentiates between study hard and study smart. Uh, not not only you need to study hard, you also need to study smart juga eh. Because time, this is not the only course that you are taking this semester. And since everything is doing it, it is is done online, you know, students may have um, uh, not problems, but they may require more time to understand about the course and how to go about the assessments. So imagine that, yeah, you need time to understand, you need time to process, you need time to, to, to progress. And then when you're too ambitious, a lot of things on your plate, at the end of the day, you give up. So kita tak nak yang itu. So try to be as simple as possible, tapi simple cannot be too simple, okay? Simple yang effective lah, all right? So materials to done, laju je eh. Now, I just want to talk about this. Ah, this one is quite important. So we'll start about this, yeah? Just because just now I've already explained to you about general purpose, specific purpose. So let us go back, but this time around, we have better and clearer understanding. So just now I talk about general purpose, specific purpose, and central idea. And all of these three perlu ada in your outline. So nanti later when I give you the template, you tengok outline tersebut, Nanti I give you also a sample of an outline. Not only the template, but the sample as well. So you can look at the sample, but don't copy the sample because the sample topic, they're different. And don't use the topic in the sample. Uh, itu memang plagiarism. I can see the berani mati lah tu. Okay, because that one is a sample and instead you are still using it for your speech. Okay. Now, general purpose, uh, I give it to inform. Specific purpose to inform my audience about the benefits of music therapy for people with psychological or cognitive disabilities. And the central idea, music therapy developed as formal mode of treatment during the 20th century, utilizes a number of methods and is explained by several theories that account for its success. You can see here there are three main uh components here number one formal mode number two utilizes a number and number three memang kita ada letak three saja for central idea why because writing or coming up with your speech is basically like writing a normal essay basically when you write uh an essay you need to have at least three body contents correct you may ask uh you may have this in your mind mr e what about if i have more than three you can have more than three, even up to 10 ke, 12 ke, 20 ke, up to you. But the question now is, you have five minutes to deliver your informative speech and seven minutes for your body, uh, for your persuasive speech. Do you think that having more con more content will help you? Tak, kan? So when you want to organize your speech, you must also take into consideration the duration of time that is given for your speech. So you're given five minutes. So do you think that you can have, you can afford to have more than three contents? I don't think so. And although you feel that, oh no, my, my speech is too short. Yes, that happens when you write. Okay, that happens when you, when you write a speech. But now, you are going to deliver a speech. Dengan Mr. E dengan tengok, and you have that nervous and everything. You know, sometimes that three minutes, eh, five minutes to that will just five hours to you, okay? Or sometimes that three contents to you own can afford only to explain about two sahaja. Yes, and that happens. And I am very particular when it comes to time management juga, yeah? So the moment it reaches five minutes, I'll stop you, although your speech belum lagi habis. Uh, because you need to organize your speech. That's why you need to practice before you present your speech so that you know whether you have actually, you know, used that five minutes ke or ada juga yang habis awal, two, three minutes dah habis. Uh, that also happens, okay? So all of these three is a uh, requirement lah for you to have, yeah? Dalam you punya template nanti. But not to worry. Nanti template tu memang dia dah tulis awal-awal. So your job is just to, <coughs> sorry, your job is just to fill in lah. But when you want to come up with this, nanti later when we do online consultation, we'll start off and we'll be doing this progressively. Not to worry. Kita akan ada uh, topic and also uh, this thing lah, GPSP and CI ni. So you present and then I'll give you my comments. Okay. But I'm not forcing anyone to participate on that uh, in that consultation, but I highly encourage everyone to do so. And you know why? Because ada some students, they're just good at understanding my my, my lecture macam ni. Dia dah faham dah. 
So they don't need consultation. Some, they require consultation. So this is entirely your call, lah, eh? not mine. So whoever participate, I will try to respond. Okay, so uh, this is some of the things that you can do for your speech introduction. Uh, what are the things to be included in your speech introduction? Yeah, so um, dalam introduction, there should be uh, attention grabber. Wajib lah, attention grabber tu wajib. Now, what is basically attention grabber? Now, let me see if I have example here. Tak ada. All right. In your introduction, whether it is an informative speech or persuasive speech, you need to have an, inter, uh, an attention grabber. Okay, an attention grabber or attention getter is basically like an, a small introduction for you to get or to capture the interest of your audience. Okay, so it can be something, these are some of the uh, examples that I can share with you. Lah. You can just read on your own. Eh? Um, uh, kita ada relate to the topic, state the importance of your topic, startle the audience, you know, arouse the curiosity, question the audience, begin with a quotation, tell a story. You can even start with a joke, you know, some historical, uh, some historical information, anything, just to get the audience attention. But of course, your attention grabber has to be in uh, has to be relevant to the topic. You don't talk. You don't talk about a joke but it's not relevant to the topic uh, okay uh, this is some spe uh, some sample of speech introduction as you can see here yeah all right okay done with this uh, speech introduction any question to ask about your speech introduction any questions so far All right. As we go along or as we do this progressively, and if let's say tiba -tiba at, that, at that time you have questions to ask, you can always ask during our consultation. Consultation will be done online, but not like this. Yeah? Consultation will be done online on iClass. Uh, I discuss. So I'll create a post. It's, I think it's best for you to respond to the post. So we have specific posts for every aspect of our speech. So nanti later when uh, when I share with you the lecture videos, there will be this one uh, lecture that I'll just talk from the beginning until the end about the informative speech sahaja. What is needed in the informative speech? That is uh, in terms of uh, introduction, body content, and the conclusion. I even will share with you a sample of a speech so that you know, okay, this is good. Okay, this is what not to do and what not. Uh, what we learned today, all those lecture notes and lecture videos, they are just in general. That is applicable for both speeches. But there will be two videos nanti that explain about the, each assessment specifically with some samples and everything you do not need to worry on that but after watching that video and you still have questions nanti during consultation you can always ask me okay okay what else here um i'm not going to look in terms of uh organizing the body speech the ending of the speech that one is uh you can read on your own and let us talk about visual aids because someone just not talk us about visual aids can so we'll talk about visual aids dulu okay in both speeches, visual aids are compulsory. We have marks for visual aids. Okay? Visual aids ni apa? Dia macam alat yang membantu untuk your speech. So, there must be a visual aid. At least one. What are the visual aids? Now, let us look, yeah? Okay? Uh, this one you can read on, on your own. Okay. Let us talk about visual aids, yeah? Uh, why do we need visual aids? Uh, tak apa, this one will skip. Okay, types of visual aids. Pie chart, bar chart, organography, these are types of visual aids, yeah? <laughs> Remember just now I said for your informative speech, it is a requirement for you to have one uh, chart or one uh, graph or one table to support your, your, your speech. Even having that itself is already a visual aid. So let's say you have a pie chart. So your pie chart, just one pie chart, I will consider that as visual aid. And you only have this, Haja, throughout your speech. 
So you da meet the minimum requirement of that speech, and that is to have at least one visual aid. But of course, there will be students having more than one visual aid. You know, like a chart, and then like a photo, and then there will be like uh, you know some videos, ke apa ke. It's okay. The more visual aids that you have, the better, of course, because it helps for for a person to understand uh, your speech. But then again. As much as you want to have more visual aids, you must understand that you have only five minutes. Satu. Number two, the focus should not be on your visual aids. The focus should be on your speech, because this assessment is about your speech. It's not about your visual aid. So I advise you to at least have one or two sahaja visual aids, not more than that. <coughs> not more than that, yeah, because I need to focus on your speech. I don't want you to rely too much focusing on your visual aids. So bar chart, pie chart, graph, table, organography, something like like this. Yeah, these are considered as visual aids. Even PowerPoint is also considered as visual aid. Using Prezi, Haiku Deck, PDF, these are all visual aids. Remember, you have just now like pictures, and then you have your graph, and then you have this, and you compile everything. Using PowerPoint, even using PowerPoint as a visual aid. So let's just say the student does not want to use PowerPoint. However, she only have sorry, she only has this pie chart. So nanti bila dia present the card Google Meet ni, dia hanya keluarkan pie chart ni dalam bentuk JPEG saja lah, not using PowerPoint. Okay, not a problem at all. But some students they prefer to have words, you know, in the so-called chart. Need to edit here and there. So instead of using just JPEG or PNG dalam bentuk gambar, that person have this on PowerPoint and add more words, and then you present using PowerPoint. Pun okay. So PowerPoint is part of visual aids. So in order to answer your friend's question just now about whether uh, uh, is it compulsory to have a PowerPoint. It's not compulsory to use PowerPoint, but it is compulsory for you to use a visual aid. Ah, uh, faham eh dua tu? It's not compulsory to use PowerPoint, but it is compulsory for you to have a visual aid. Okay, all right. So coming back to this one just now, pasal visual aid tu. Okay, ah, uh, this is chart and graphs. This is slides. Ada yang pakai audio and also video. Maybe I don't know because your topic requires you. Okay, we, uh, uh, be, before we begin, I would like you to listen to this audio. I would like to you to watch this video. Up to you lah, because you will be using this Google uh, Meet. So kalau you choose the entire screen for you to present, uh, you boleh apa ni small uh, uh, sorry minimize kan, and then you pergi buka video. Tak perlu pun you compile everything using PowerPoint. Pun boleh. But some people, they prefer to use PowerPoint because that is how you organize your visual aids. Pun acceptable. Okay? But then again, you must remember the focus is on your speech, not on your visual aids. Yeah? Uh, this this is a, just a gentle reminder for those who are actually, who are going to use PowerPoint. You like to put everything in your PowerPoint. And then you read from your PowerPoint to, to me or to your friends. That is not acceptable. This is not a reading assessment. This is a speech presentation. So you must be having the ability to deliver your speech. When you ask me, Mr. E, is it okay when I deliver my speech? Sometimes I look at your, uh, my notes. Okay, the best is for you to memorize. Of course, because it's a speech and there's a, like a duration of time for you to prepare your speech. Unless you plan to do your speech a day before your presentation, then you don't have enough time to memorize. Okay, best is for you to memorize. Second best is for you to re to refer to your cue cards. Worst case scenario, you refer most of your time on your slides or on your cue cards. So when your eyes are all the time on the cue cards, not on the camera focusing on me, uh, eye contact tak nampak, I can only assume that you refer to to your slides or to your cue cards all the time. And marks will be deducted. Markah kan kurang. Uh, that is why preparation for your speech is also important. Okay, so those who like to do things at the very last minute, I advise you not to do that. It will affect your your marks. Okay, so again, you can use audio and video as your visual aid. Okay, handouts, props. You know. Now let us talk. Even you yourself, you yourself can be 
a visual aid. Interesting, kan? How can a person, you as a speaker, uh, apa ni, you are a, 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 a part of the visual aid. So, coming back to you tadi, remember I said that I like to do yoga. I don't like to do yoga. This is just an example, yeah? You like to do yoga. You want to teach people, you want to give information about yoga. You said, I would like to talk about three important steps in yoga that is effective to lose weight, contohnya. The first step, ah, you pun buatlah macam mana lah pusing sini. So, bila you buat pusing tu, that means you as a visual aid. You are showing people on how to do it. So, you yourself can be a visual aid. And dalam you punya, let's say, portfolio, you mentioned that my visual aid will be me, myself, showing to people steps to do yoga. So, that is acceptable. Uh, that can also be your visual aid. Uh, so, uh, when you want to come up with your visual aid, you have to be very creative and also you must, uh, and it has to be effective. Creative is one thing. Effective is another thing. Yeah? All right. So, done with visual aid. The rest you can read on your own, yeah? Uh, because I just focus on the topics that I find uh, very important. But then again, for each of these slides, there will be lecture videos and you can get to listen to it so that you can understand better. And I will upload on YouTube and I will share you from time to time. Okay? All right? So, do you have any question at all? So, at this moment, maybe the focus is now doing your speech. And after today lecture, maybe you can start to think of a topic. Tapi when you want to think of the topic, uh, here are some of the tips that I can share with you. Okay, number one, have more than one topic. Why? Because since I said that there should be 34 types, oh, sorry, 34 topics, I, if let's say you have chosen one topic, suddenly when I, nanti later, I will come up with like a list on our WhatsApp group. I hope that everyone has, that join our WhatsApp group, yeah? So I will come up with a list in our WhatsApp group. It will be on the first come, first serve basis. So the moment kawan you dah tulis your topic tu, suddenly you want to tulis, alamak lambat. But now you have the second, the second topic or the third topic. At least three lah, three topics. Let's just say someone has chosen your topic, and you lambat nak respond to the to the list, you still have the second topic and the third topic. Okay. Number two, uh, this I'm talking about topic, deciding the topic first, eh, because I guess that is what you're going to do after today. Number two, I need to give you my green light. So nanti later when I come out with the list and everyone has responded with the topic, I will put like a green tick next to it. Those yang dapat green tick tu, that means your topic is good to go. Next is for you, sorry, uh, second tips that I can share bila nak choose a topic uh, before you give me the, your, your topic to me is for you to search dahulu. Let's just say I want to talk about, okay, there's this one topic that I would like to talk about. The topic is cryptozoology. You know what cryptozoology? From the word crypt, crypt means that extinct or ancient. Zoology has to do with animals. So I want to talk about animals that have gone extinct or animals that are considered ancient animals. You know? Okay, sounds interesting, right? In fact, by just looking at the topic cryptozoology, I'm pretty sure I'm going to capture people's interest. Betul tak? Because people mesti nak tahu, eh, cryptozoology tu pasal apa? Interesting. Then the second step is to find articles. So search, punya search, not many articles available online. There are books, but books are available in the library. I need to go to the library. And given this, the, the current circumstance or the current situation, we are not allowed to go out. So I'm, how am I going to go and get the information? Okay, so that is the reason why when you want to consider your topic, once you have that topic, go and search dahulu. If there are books available, magazines available, topics, uh, sorry, articles from websites, uh, that means the topic is okay lah. All right? Uh, so, nanti later when you want to do research, you want to do the content of your speech, it's easy for you to find the, the articles. So, we have a question here from your friend. <clears throat> Sir, is there any specific year for articles finding? Okay, this is not a research uh, course per se, but since I have done research and I'm also supervising my students for their final year project. I'm supervising some of the uh, master's students and also, um, uh, you know, um, 
also I'm supervising, you know, uh, some research groups. And I'm pretty sure you'll be doing research as well. So my advice to you is, um, normally we look at five years back. So this is 2020, and since this is early, and also because of this COVID-19 thingy big, that, that started somewhere in January, maybe not many publications available. So we'll start off with 1919, sorry, 2019 and five years back. So from 2019, sampai 2019, 18, 17, 16, and 15, until 2015. But there are also exceptions. Okay, when we talk about contohnya Marslow Haraiki, that is like a concept. Or maybe we talk about, you know, theories that was developed in 1940s. Since Mr. E kata five years back, ramai tak ambil teori tu. Padahal teori tu is acceptable. Because theory was developed in 1940s and you want to use that article, you kata 1940s dah terlalu lama. No, not necessarily. Concept, theories, fundamentals, frameworks can be more than five years ago. Because they were done more than that. Tapi, when we talk about just research articles ke, books ke apa ke, preferably five years back. But then again, some students may think that um, I cannot afford, I cannot find five years back. Most of my articles are more than five years. Is it okay ke, Miss Lee? Okay je. Tak ada apa pun. Kita tak tolak markah. Cuma, I want to create that culture. Later, when you do your FYP, you realize that it is a requirement for you to find materials that are five years back. Okay? But for this course, it's not a requirement. But let us start the practice. So, when you want to search uh, for for Google, yeah? Uh, okay? Kalau you type here, Google. All right? Uh, let's say I like to use this uh, Google Scholar. Kalau nak cari apa ni, research articles lah. Okay, if you use Google Scholar, you know, let's say I, uh, COVID, eh, sorry, uh, tak nak lah COVID, it's COVID je. Let's say um, music therapy. Okay, uh, so we have music therapy. So kita boleh lah uh, custom range. Let's say uh, 2015 to 2020 search. So whatever that appears here, it's within this time range. But this is only for uh, apa ni, uh, scholarly articles. But if it is just a general one from Google itself, you know, you use Google, you're able to, to see my, uh, ni kan, jangan saya shot sendiri pula. Are you able to see this? Are you able to see my web browser just now? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. all right. So, if let's say this one, I normally say that, okay, uh, music therapy, okay, music uh, therapy, uh, okay, there are many results here, okay, uh, let me just check, check settings code, mm, advanced search, let me see if they have this, okay. Uh, last update anytime, uh, past year, you know, uh, all right, or oh, dia ada macam tu sajalah. So, what I normally do is, uh, I just type music therapy, okay, 2015 to 2020, okay. So, normally dia akan keluar lah. How to know, you can see here, nampak tak, 2019, all right, this is 2020, uh, this is 2020, Right, so you can see that they can close this is 2017. So you get information that is within. This is how I do it. Kalau a normal search on a Google search, yeah. But if let's say you're using Google Scholar, these are some books, suggested books. Uh, some of them are research articles. Research articles is not compulsory, yeah, but can be part of your can be part of your um, materials. And because some research uh, articles are quite difficult for you to comprehend or to understand. So I know and I don't want to make it compulsory. But if you, when you, you search for one and then you can read and understand, then it's okay. You can use that as uh, to support your, your, your uh, or as part of your materials for your speech, yeah? Okay. Any questions so far? Other than that? So far, so good, everyone? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
So uh, that is about the topic. So after today, so maybe you can start with the topic. Until I have uh, come up with the list. Bukan lah list apa. I just ask you to fill in your names and what are the topics. So it's on the first come first serve basis, you know. But then again, um, if let's say uh, before you want to, but then but then again nanti I know it's a bit um, troublesome, you know, for me to come up with that list because I realized dulu satu case because we have 34 of you. What happened was when I come up with the list, ada orang tu dia dah copy dan dalam dia nak type dia punya topik dia tu dia tengah type bukan dia tengah copy paste ah dia tengah type kawan dia dah respon patu dia respon so dia jadi bertindih the list tu becomes bertindih pula so um, i do not know how i hope that that won't happen in our group okay so hopefully that you just check first and make sure that you already have the topic type dulu and then you just you know Once I create the list, cepat-cepat masukkan. So that tak ada bertindih dengan you, dengan kawan you tengah nak tulis pada ketika tu, ya. Yeah? Because I find that that is uh, if, uh, not effective. It's, it's good because kita nak go with first come, first serve basis. But when I go through and I realize that there will be like few topics that are similar, I will make mention in the group. Not not to worry. Okay, saya akan beritahu lah. Saya kata, okay, uh, this student and that student, Uh, your topic is very similar since uh, the first student responded first. I hope the second student can change to another one. So you just change lah. Until you are given the the green tick. Once you are given the green tick, that is for you to 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 continue or to progress. Okay, your with your speech. What can you do? After I have given you the the green tick or the, I have given you a, uh, uh, the the good to go punya ni. So, the green light, yeah. So, what you can do is for you to focus on writing the general purpose. General purpose, I think, sama lah kita semua uh, to inform. And then move on to the specific purpose and move on to the central idea. Yeah. Okay. Then, once you are done, you can move on to finding materials dulu. So you have the topic, you pergi dekat materials, eh, sorry, dekat Google search, find materials dulu. And compile them. Simpan dulu. Buat satu folder, keep them. So contohnya kalau if let's say the, the, the materials and PDF boleh download. But if let's say from a website, how to download? Then you copy paste lah. You can save the website juga if you want to. But it will be a bit troublesome nanti nak masuk kat dalam Word. So you copy paste dekat dalam word. Nanti later when I share with you uh, yang yang that lecture video tu on how to find lecture notes and everything, eh, sorry, materials and everything, there are few considerations that you have to consider before uh, you confirm nak ambil tu as your material. Okay, takut nanti once you dah simpan-simpan, ada requirement lain, lepas tu you nak kena cari balik website tu. Kalau jumpa, jumpa. Tak jumpa satu hal, ya. Uh, okay. So, that is materials. Then, lepas tu baru you boleh buat you punya speech. Start with your introduction, your body content, and your conclusion. So, you have all these three, dah buat draft semua. And whatever that you are doing, the this will be in our I discuss. So, you are habis satu part, you present dulu. You share with me. Habis satu part, you share with me. So, those who share will get my response lah. And my response is simple, you know. If I think yours is okay, I'll just say good to go. I don't want to give like wordy comments like oh you need that. As long as you're okay, good to go. But if I find that you memang dah lari dari track, far away from the right track, then I'll give you my wordy comment. What are the things say? So those who yang dapat wordy comments tu, maksudnya komen yang agak banyak dengan perkataan perkataan semua dekat I discuss tu, ah uh, maybe you are off the track. But those yang dapat good to go, you just good to go. But most importantly, I'm not going to look at your language or your grammar. That is on you. Okay, that is on you. And if you have time, inshallah, I can share with you what some of the uh, tools or uh, softwares that you can actually use to check your grammar, yeah? Okay, anything else so far? Before I, because I have also another class at 4.15. So I hope that I can end our class now. I hope everything is okay, yeah? And I hope my explanation is okay for you to understand. We have quite a few of you in this class and at this moment, I think I have about 36 of you. So yeah, um, 
I hope that you understand everything and I hope everything is clear, but not to worry. We still have our WhatsApp group. We still have, you know, um, our uh, iDiscuss, iClass uh, for us to correspond with each other. And also you can uh, message me personally, but only if you have personal problems and everything. If let's say it is in relation to this course or to the topic, ke, apa ke, please ask in the group so that when I respond, everyone else will get the same information. Yeah. So I wish all the best and good luck for this semester. Uh, given the circumstance, I just hope that you know we can uh, have a fruitful semester uh, this semester and hopefully that all of you can do well for this course not to worry i'm not the kind of lecturer yang okay in my class only few of you akan lulus lain akan gagal no i'm not that kind of lecturer don't if you perform you get what you get not to worry okay you just need to to bukan you nak you need to be uh, you need to perform to me you just need to to do everything accordingly uh, okay kalau you buat everything accordingly uh, uh, you don't become a problem to me or to your friends, inshallah, kalau lulus tu dalam tangan lah. But if you put extra efforts, doa banyak-banyak, you'll get whatever that you are wishing for. If you want an A, you'll get an A. My job is just to give what you deserve, okay, or what you have shown to me, yeah? Okay, so not to worry on that. So I'll try my very best to assist you, and I hope that you're going to get, because I, this semester can be quite challenging to, to the both of us, yeah? And no, yes, happy fasting, thank you. Happy fa fa fasting to all of you as well, yeah? Uh, Lepas ni kita dah fasting pula, dah tu satu lagi, dah ada challenge juga. So, but not to worry, insyaAllah, those who are tested by Allah, tested by God, they are actually the one dear to Him. Okay, kalau kita di uji, kita, we are a group of people who are very dear to to the Lord. So, not to worry on that, yeah. Alright, so, I guess that is all. Thank you so much. Kalau ada kekurangan ke apa ke, I'm so sorry in advance. Uh, if anything, just let me know. Alright, so I guess that is all for today. Thank you so much for joining this, yeah. All right. Assalamualaikum. You can now leave uh, this, uh, apa ni, um, uh, um, class or meeting. Yeah. Thank you so much.